Hello and welcome back. I'm Joseph Hoffman. Today we are learning how to improvise or arrange an accompaniment to All the Pretty Horses so you can play this as a duet with a friend who already knows how to play the melody. From a past lesson, you probably remember that an accompaniment is music that goes along with a melody. Think of the melody as the main element we listen to in music. It's the part that you sing. The accompaniment adds flavor, support, and mood, complexity to the melody. Creating an accompaniment for a melody is kind of like choosing what kind of clothes to put on. The same melody can be dressed up in so many different ways. All right, to improvise our accompaniment, we're going to be reading the chord symbols from up above the staff. Check out this first chord symbol. What do you see? Capital A, lowercase m, stands for A minor. Can you show me an A minor chord on your piano? An A minor chord looks like this. It's built on A, C, and E. Those three notes make an A minor triad or chord. All right? Now, the next chord is going to be what? That's right, D minor. Can you show me a D minor chord? It's going to be right here. Let's try to play that. Now, to go all the way from A minor to D minor is a whole fourth away. Not a big deal, but there's a smoother way we can do this. I'm about to show you an advanced technique, which makes chord playing a lot smoother, easier, and more musical. It's called doing an inversion. With inversions, you take the same three notes, but you place a note that used to be on top down on the bottom. Or you can take a note that was on the bottom and put it on top. For example, with this D minor chord, we could take this A and instead place it down here on this A. And it's still a D minor chord. All that you need for a D minor chord is to have a D, an F, and an A. It doesn't really matter the order. So now we've inverted the D minor chord by placing this A down here. The nice thing about that is you'll recall just a second ago we played our A minor chord like this with those three notes. And then if we use the inversion of D minor, all we have to do is move those two notes up. Some of you may recognize this as the four chord. And that's exactly right. The D minor chord is our four chord in this key. It's a fourth, one, two, three, four, above A, which is why it's called the four chord, by the way but we can invert it by putting the A down here, which is a much more natural way to play the four chord. We've got one chord, then the D minor chord, which is the four chord. So let's try that. Place your right hand in the A minor pentascale, and we'll do four beats on each chord because you'll see one chord symbol per measure. So the A minor chord, try it with me, go. One, two, three three, four, now pause to get ready to do the D minor chord. Let's leave our finger one on A and then slide our other fingers up one note so we can have finger three on the D, finger five on the F. Should sound like that. Try the D minor chord for four, four beats, go. One, two, three, four. Let's practice going back and forth between the A minor chord and the D minor chord a couple of times in a row. We'll just repeat it three times, doing that transition. Four beats on each chord. Ready, go. One, two, three, prepare. One, two, three, back to A. One, two, three, four to D minor. One, two, three, back to A. One, two, A minor to D minor. One, two, three, four, good job. Now let's keep going. Look at measure three you'll see that it's just a capital G. What does that mean? That's right, it's a G major chord. Now, G major, we can use these three notes here, all just a step below the A minor chord, which we had a moment before. So let's play G major for th four beats. Ready, go. One, two, three, four. Then in the next measure, we go back to A minor for four beats. Let's try it. One, two, three, four. Good, now let's try all of line one. Right now we're just doing blocked chords and holding it for all four beats. Ready, go. One, 
two, three, D minor, one, two, three, to G major, one, two, three, to A minor, one, two, three, and stop. Good. Now press pause and try that three or four times on your own. Count four beats for each chord. Press play when you feel really comfortable and you're ready to go on. Okay, now let's make this accompaniment sound a little more interesting by adding in the left hand. What often sounds best for an accompaniment is the right hand doing blocked or possibly broken chords, which would mean playing one note at a time, like in an arpeggio, but to have the left hand play only the root of the chord. In a chord, the root is the lowest bass note of the chord, assuming the chord is not in an inversion. The root is the lowest note. So for an A minor chord, the root is A. It so happens that the root of the chord is always the name of the chord. So A minor, the root is A. For D minor, even though the lowest note is A, remember that's not the root. The original basic position chord is like this. So your root is D, even though in this case, because we've inverted the chord, our lowest note will be A, but our root is D. What our left hand's going to do is play the root. So to make this convenient, let's place our left hand in this D minor pentascale. What that will allow us to do is, while the right hand plays the A minor chord, our finger one can play A, one, two, three, four, and then when we go to the D minor chord, our finger five of left hand will play D, while our right hand shifts to D minor. One, two, three, four. Let's try this. For now, I want you to just focus on the left hand, only playing the root of the chord. You'll play A, then D, then in measure three, you go up to G, then back to A. Let's count four beats on each one, and your left hand's going to play. I'll play left hand and right hand. You just play left hand. Ready, go. One, two, three, four, two, D. Two, three, four, two, G. Two, three, four, two, A. Two, three, and stop. Good, let's practice that one more time. If that was really easy and you want to try adding the right hand, that's fine, or just stick with the left hand. Ready, go. One, two, three, four, two, D. Two, Three, four, two, G. Two, three, four, two, A. Two, three, four. Good. Now, here's the real challenge. If you haven't already tried it, press pause to try putting both hands together. It's going to feel a little tricky at first, but just keep doing it maybe five, maybe ten, maybe even twenty times until you feel really comfortable with it. Then press play to go on. All right, you'll recall that line two is the same as line one. It will be the same chords, same melody. So let's go on and check out line three. What's the first chord you see here? It's a C major chord. Now, can you show me a C major chord on your piano? It will look like this. C, E, and G are the three notes that make C major. However, since our hand's been hanging out down here, this might be a good place to use another inversion. Remember the chord we just played in the measure before was A minor. So rather than having to shift all the way up here, what if we took this G and inverted this chord to look like this? Now you'll notice we're just one note different, one key away from the A minor chord. We had this for A minor, then all we have to do is change this A to a G now we have a C, E, G with a G on the bottom, which equals a C major chord in inversion. All right, let's practice that once, playing it. So put your hand in position for an A minor chord, which is how we ended line two. And now as we go to line three, keep your fingers exactly where they are, except finger one, which is gonna slide down to a G. That gives us a C major chord. Okay, let's try that again. Go back to A minor, four beats, one, two, three, now to C. One, two, three, four. Now what's the next chord? That's right, A minor, so finger one comes back. One, two, three, four. The next chord is G major, so we shift everything down one position. One, two, 
three, four. Then the next measure is F major. So we shift down again, one key, F major. All right, let's try all of line three. So find C major by, uh, come up here to the A minor. Actually, let's start at the last measure of line two with this A minor chord, and then we'll go on to line three so we can practice that transition. Ready, go. One, two, three, four to C. One, two, three, back to A minor. One, two, three to G major. One, two, three to F major. One, two, three, four. Then we, as we go to line four, we go back to A minor. And then line four is the same as lines one and two. Now let's add the left hand playing the root of each chord for line three. You'll recall the left hand was here in the D minor pentascale, but we're going to need to play a C. Hmm, trouble is no finger is near a C. Where is the nearest C to our hand position here? Looks like right here. We could come up to this C, but since we just used finger one on A on the line before, let's actually just kind of scoot our finger five down to C here. Remember, since we're improvising this accompaniment, there's not always a right or a wrong way to do it. We just want to do what's musical, convenient, and beautiful. So, I think we're going to just stretch finger five down a little bit to that C there, and then you'll notice in the very next measure we're back to A. So finger one's going to come back to A, and then from there we can kind of head back to our regular position. Step down to G, step down to F. Okay? Let's try all of that together. Let's begin with the last measure of line two again on this A, and then we'll go on to line three. Four beats on each note. Playing the roots of the chord, ready, try it with me, go. One, two, three, down to C. One, two, three, back to A. One, two, three, step down to G. One, two, three, down to F. One, two, Three, then we're going to go back to A on the next line. One, two, and then we finish the piece. Great. Now, I'll add in the right hand chords while you play the left hand and count out loud with me. Four beats. Let's start on the last measure of line two again so we get this transition. Ready, go. One, two, three, four to C. One, two, three, back to A. One, two, three, four to G, one, two, three to F, one, two, three, back to A minor, one, two, three, and four. Great. Now press pause and practice that several times on your own until you're comfortable with those chord changes. Then press play when you're ready to go on. Okay, now to practice the whole piece, Let's do this. I'll play the melody and you play the accompaniment and we'll do a duet together, just like you could do with a friend who also happens to know the melody. If you haven't found a friend, by the way, ask someone today if they'll learn this and try it along with you. For now, I'll play the melody for you. By the way, if you do this on a duet where, you're, where you just have one piano, which is obviously the most common, the accompaniment person will usually sit on the left doing the lower notes and you might have to ask the melody player to move up an octave or two so you each have room. So I'm going to play my melody up here. You can be playing your accompaniment down here. Remember to count four beats for each measure. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. If you don't quite feel ready to do this hands together, just choose one hand to do. So I'm on melody, you're on accompaniment. You start on the A minor chord. I'll count four beats to start us off. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. A minor, one, two, three, four. D minor, two, three, four, two, G, two, three, four, one, two, three, now to C, one, two, three, four, one, two, to A minor, one, two, three, four.
four. And I kind of like to slow down that, those last two measures a little bit. So be ready for that. And with your duet partner, listen and make sure you land on that last measure together. Okay, now that you know all the chord changes that we're going to need for the whole song, let me show you how you can own this and improvise your own accompaniment styles based on the chords that we've already learned. There's so many possibilities. We've just learned a basic blocked chord that we've held for the whole measure. One, two, three, four. Now a really easy way to vary that would be to add some kind of rhythm. Now since the mood of this song is peaceful and flowing, we probably want to do something subtle, but we could like do repeated quarter notes in the right hand like this. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. Or we could do the opposite of that by holding whole notes in the right hand but doing quarter notes in the left hand. One, two, three, four to D minor. One, Why don't you choose one of those two options, either repeating quarter notes in the right hand or repeating quarter notes in the left hand. Press pause and try that on your own. Press play when you're ready to see some more possibilities. Now let's try another possibility, and that's to do a broken chord accompaniment. Now instead of playing everything all at once, we're going to start with the left hand only on beat one, and then on beat two, we'll add in the lowest note of the chord, beat three, we'll add in the middle note, and beat four, we'll add the top note. So it will sound like this. One, two, three, four, D, two, three, four, G, two, three, four, A, two, three, four, again. It's important that you have four beats on each chord, otherwise you'll get out of sync with the melody. But as long as you spend four beats on each chord, there's no end to the, the combinations or the rhythms you could do. I was just kind of doing quarter notes, ta, 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 but you could go ta, ti, 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 ta, ta, ti, 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 ta, one, two, three, four. Two and three and four. Notice I'm still, even though I'm adding eighth notes now, I'm still making my pattern last for four beats. And if that's confusing to think about adding different patterns but still having to think about four beats, you know, you could turn on a metronome or just count out loud. Remember, if you're doing eighth notes, there has to be an and. One, two, and three, and four, and one, and two, and three, and four. Now, what I'd like you to do is press pause and experiment with some different kinds of accompaniment patterns. And then, when you're ready to go on, press play to continue. Okay, let's try our duet one last time. This time you can do any kind of accompaniment pattern you want. I'll play the melody. And I'm going to make it a little bit fancier. Instead of doing it like this, I'm going to play the melody in both hands, just for fun. And you're in charge of the accompaniment. Let's try and stay together. Remember to count four beats per measure so we can stick together. One, two, three, four. Three, four.
Nice work learning how to play the accompaniment for all the pretty horses. Now you just need to find a friend. Ask them to learn the melody and you can play a duet together. If you do this, please make a video of the two of you playing together and share it with me on Facebook or on our recital hall. Thanks for watching and see you next time. You know, choosing an accompaniment to go along with a melody is also kind of like choosing different ingredients to complement a certain dish. Oh, I see. Like, if the hot dog is the melody, then the accompaniment would be the bun. Right. And the mustard, too. Oh, and relish. Right. Mm. So now we've taken a plain and simple melody, I mean hot dog, and made it even more delicious with the accompaniment of the bun and condiments. And now perhaps you would like to accompany me in eating this. Yeah, delicious. It's like a symphony in my mouth. I'm relishing every bite. <laughs>